Well, we thought that they were tracking this basket. I mean, certainly that was the signals that they were giving us earlier mm -hmm. this year. Yeah. And then a couple of days ago, we've had this Wall Street Journal article that said yeah. that actually they were going back in favor of stability. Um, I think what is clear, though, is that regardless of whatever is actually going on, uh, they are moving in line with the dollar. There's been this stealth devaluation against the uh, yen and the euro. Mm -hmm. uh, that has happened uh, pretty much over the last few months. Right. Um, and I think it's going to make for a very interesting G7 summit uh, today where China is actually going to be a, a topic of discussion yeah. amongst, the, uh, amongst the major leaders. I have to take a little bit of issue with the, uh, the, the Wall Street uh, Journal article there. I mean, not, not, I mean, not that they're not, you know, not that I don't have the utmost respect for them as mm. journalists and everything, but, you know, I, just, I, I, I think everybody loves a healthy discussion from yeah. time to time. They're doing two things in China, let's face it. Uh, you know, they, they say, you know, they've been telling us, you know, don't focus so much on this thing that we put out every day. Focus instead on something that we're not telling you, what we're actually doing, which is, you know, we are diversifying, you know, kind of our currency regime, yeah. for lack of a better word. And yet, you know, because that's all we have to work with and see, we do look at the midpoint, you know, ever yeah. so briefly. Sometimes we don't look at it, you know, especially when it's the same for weeks and weeks at a time, mm. which it has been mm. here. So are they, maybe they're doing something, but this is just the reading they're giving. I mean, the fact that it went from 6.49 to 6.50 to 6.556 or whatever, you know, yeah. not that I'm following it, um, it just reflects one part of a basket in the fact that the dollar itself is in a different mode, right? Well, this is, I think, is... The dollar is going up against everything Correct. because the Fed folks are mouthing off. And, and this is really the major concern for the Chinese. I mean, if you look yeah. at the pattern of what has been going on over the last uh, 12 months, let's mm -hmm. say, the Fed turns hawkish, and then the Chinese devalue because they, they start getting capital outflows. That causes uh, deflationary pressures spreading right. around the world. Right. Fed turns dovish, dovish again. We get the whole dance starting all over again. So one of the concerns that we have at the moment is whether this dance is in its next phase, whether we've done another circle uh, in January and February, and now we're, we're beginning again. Mm. Uh, period of renminbi stability means the Fed turns hawkish again, mm -hmm. which means that the Chinese will now start moving on the currency. And it seems like really that's, uh, that's what's likely to happen, which then leads us to question whether really the dollar strength is going to be maintained or not, uh -huh. um, and whether the rate hikes are going to be in the way that the, the Fed really wants them to be. Don't you find, don't you find contradictory, uh, don't you find a, a bit of a, uh, a certain element of uh, you know, contradictory stance when it comes to currencies, though? I mean, uh, you know, the, uh, the yen, you know, went from, uh, went to 105, 106 or whatever, and then they started mouthing off and Kuroda started talking about, but, you know, got a mic, found a microphone and started talking about, about, about intervention. Yes. And then the U.S. kind of, kind of slapped him around saying, down boy, down yeah. boy, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't do that. So, I mean, how do you criticize the Chinese? Well, you know, especially a... how do you do the G7? Because yeah. it's the Kuroda who was talking about intervention. You know, yeah. the, the Americans didn't like what they were saying and the Chinese aren't there to defend their policy. Yeah. So it's like, no, there, there, there is a very interesting game, I think, being played at the highest levels here, uh -huh. where the Japanese and the Europeans want the dollar to be stronger, uh -huh. but they don't want it so strong so that it actually unsettles the Chinese, because as the Chinese devalue, then that causes deflation, which actually impacts Europe and Japan right. on a disproportionate basis. Uh -huh. So in a way, what the US has done is sort of sided a little bit with, with, with China. I mean, one of the um, the theories that there is out there in the market is really who is actually buying who was actually buying yen and euro while, while those two currencies were, were appreciating right. and one theory was that as the Chinese were moving towards this basket it makes more sense for them to actually own more yen and euros um, in terms of their reserves so right. the reserves mirror the basket and that could be one of the things that contributes to that. Right. The other thing is the lack of structural reform the mm. third thing mm. is really the real rate differential right. Um, so, you know, there's been a lot of debate about what's going on there.